Hello everybody and welcome back to another video with me Casta and in this one we're going to talk about all things galaxies in No Man's Sky. Did you know there are 256 galaxies in this game with 18 quintillion planets within them? It would take you 585 billion years to discover all those planets. I mean who has the time right? Who has the time to go and do that? Now all players start in the same galaxy, galaxy number one which is Euclid. And then there's 255 others to go and discover. And you might be asking, why? Why, Caster, would I go and discover all of these galaxies? And well, the answer is, the galaxies are actually different from each other. They offer different things. Now, it's not a new game. You're not going to go to Calypso and all of a sudden find that the constants of No Man's Sky are completely different. But they will offer differences in terms of the planet types you find and the amount of times you are more likely to find a specific planet type so there are four different galaxy types in this game now i am on no man's sky wiki i'll leave a link down in the description below and the galaxy types are empty harsh lush and normal now most of the galaxy types are normal but uh, as you can see here it does list the lush harsh and empty types um, the actual list of galaxies is just down below here the known uh, positive galaxies that says so there's a number i mean yeah well they're all here for you to see and you can click on them uh, and it will give you some information about that galaxy it will give you regions and other such stuff so quite interesting if you if you want to know all these things to go in dive really deep into it um, you can do it's all there for you just to note the first five galaxies were named the rest are procedurally generated names which is why they make absolutely no sense um, and it even tells you the original name of the first five to which were changed um, as well, which is quite interesting. And then we've got a little table down here where it shows you how the planet types are weighted compared to the galaxy type you are in. But this only affects the yellow star systems. It does not affect the red, green and blue star systems. They are constants. OK, they will always remain in these values values are zero to four zero being very low chance of finding a certain planet type and four being a very high chance so for example if you're in a lush galaxy and i think the first lush galaxy on the list is eisentam that is number 10 um, and that will give you a weighted score of four for finding a lush planet in a lush galaxy in a yellow star system and that is a very high chance of finding it if you go into a lush system and you go onto a green star system it's always weighted as one even if you're in um, an empty or a normal it's still weighted as one these are constants as i mentioned weird planets like the exotic planets are three in red star systems so much more likely to find those in red star systems those weird wonderful planets that we go on to if you want uh, to find more dead planets obviously you go to an empty system uh, an empty system would be numbers 7, 12, 27, etc. What is number 7? Let's have a look. It is bull. I'm not even going to try and say that, but it's this one here. Uh, and it's represented by a green um, color there. It's also important to realize that the colors of each star system, whether it's yellow, red, green or blue, the colors of each star system affect the colors of the trees, the grass, the oceans of the planet. So if you're looking for an Earth-like planet, these are most likely going to be found in blue systems as far as I can tell. Um, obviously, the lush uh, galaxy would be best within a blue star system. Even though it says it's weighted as one within the blue system, uh, that's what's going to give you the colors that are more likely to make an Earth-like planet, for example. It's also worth noting that the biome probabilities are mentioned within um, this page on No Man's Sky Wiki. So, for example, if you have a harsh galaxy, it's likely that it's going to be like a normal galaxy, but there's going to be more storms on those planets. So it's not exactly like it's going to be completely overhauled. It's just that there's going to be more extreme environments within that galaxy. Now, there are different ways you can go and find these galaxies or go to these galaxies and one of the first ways that i went was by the storyline at the end of the storyline in the new beginnings mission you actually get to choose to go to a different galaxy you will be presented with four options different colors 
uh, at the end of the storyline and they will give you the option to go to a entirely new galaxy now, the empty one is displayed with a blue hologram the harsh with a red hologram the lush with a green hologram and the normal with a cyan hologram much easier and simpler way if you have not done this before or you've not been through the uh, storyline or you've already done it and you haven't got anywhere else is to actually go into a multiplayer game with a friend uh, go into their galaxy which may be a different one so for example if you join my game i'm in the hilbert dimension you're in euclid but you join my game we go into the hilbert dimension out of the anomaly and then you can lay a base computer down and then you can always go back to that base computer so you'll always go back to the hilbert dimension within that base computer another way is through portals now portals themselves don't actually link between galaxies they only link within the same galaxy so you go into a portal to a new planet it's going to be a planet within the same galaxy you were in but if you go to a portal activate it and you type in the first glyph of that portal whatever that glyph is as in type that into all the glyphs of that portal it will take you between six and four jumps from the center of the galaxy and you'll be able to go through the center of the galaxy to a new one and the galaxies all go in order from one to 256 so if you're in euclid and you go to the center you'll go to the hilbert hilbert to calypso calypso to hesperius etc one thing to note is if you do go through the center of the galaxy everything breaks your multi-tool technology breaks your ship breaks as well and you have to fix it all literally every single piece of technology you have so it's worth having a secondary multi-tool um, loaded up as your primary and use a really rubbish c-class ship that you don't care about to go through the galaxy in that way that will all break and then you can fix it at your leisure or just sell it or do whatever you want to do with it then you can call in your primary ship and get your multi-tool back and it will not be broken if you only have one of each you can get a load of repair kits and attempt to repair them all use resources etc but trust me i've done it in one of my playthroughs and it took a very long time to get things back uh, all back fixed and ready to go again if you've found a galaxy that you want to stay in and you're enjoying where you are or whatever type of galaxy it is you want to go to make a note that it is better to settle as close to the center of the galaxy as possible because that's where all the best stuff is that's where the best freighters are the best ships are the best resources multi-tools etc everything is better in the center towards the center of the galaxy the further out you go the worse they get the further in you go the better it all gets uh, and there are something like three to four billion regions in each galaxy so if if you if you can't find some space in the center then you know there's too many players there i mean there's so much room go and enjoy it so there you go guys i hope that explained all things galaxies in no man's sky for you uh, if you found value in the video please give it a like subscribe for more no man's sky content hopefully i'll see you in the next one take care and bye bye